Hi, today we're on location filming at the Centers for Disabilities in Joliet, Illinois. This center, it aims to improve the quality of life for persons with a variety of disabilities. So you'll get to hear and meet four phenomenal guests to do amazing work here. All that and more on The Windy Life. Welcome. My first guest today is Larry Burridge, and he is the CEO here at the Center for Disability Services. Welcome, Larry. Well, thank you, and <laughs> thanks for having me and us, the entire center. Definitely. Um, whatever, when any, any publicity is is good for us. Right. Good for I agree. business. I totally agree. So, explain to us a little bit about the Center for Disability. Well, the Center for Disability Services um, was formerly United Cerebral Palsy. Um, we disaffiliated from United Cerebral Palsy uh, because Center for Disability Services is a, a more accurate patrol of portrayal of what we serve. We serve all people with disabilities. Okay. We tend to serve people here with more profound disabilities than in school districts. We really have really you could break this into three or four portions. We have the school side which is from ages three and you graduate out at 22. We have the developmental training side or the adult side as we mm -hmm. refer to it as which goes from from 22 and up till, till whenever. Mm -hmm. We have uh, four SILA homes uh, which are residential homes, so with uh, up what, up to eight in each home. Most of them have seven. Mm -hmm. And then we have a respite program, among some other things. Um, we reach out to several different um, uh, counties, not just uh, not just Will County. We're into Grundy County and down to mm -hmm. Kankakee County. Um, you know, so we are a 24-7 operation, um, have been here for... The school, I think, was started about 50 years ago. But we do some things that school districts just just can't do because of the numbers. This is a little more one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And again, people with more profound um, and severe disabilities is, is really what we're serving. That's awesome. Because a lot of times the school districts can't handle more sure. severe cases. And it's awesome that you guys are here to help with that. Yeah, so the families appreciate that. Sure. And there's cases where, where people need one-to-one -one, mm -hmm. um, care. And that's a different funding source from the state. But th th that... It's hard to happen in the school district because of the you know the the amount of people they have in the the facilities themselves. So this caters more to that as well. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. So what can the community do to help the center? Well, the community we, we have a great community, and it really starts with um, a good board, strong board, uh, a real strong uh, uh, guardian and parent group mm -hmm. of of the people we serve. Some people are their own guardians. Um, you know, as you get to the adults, some have uh, uh, parents or relatives or someone else who is a, a, their own, their guardian. And then some people are the state as their guardian. So it, it works differently. We have a great parent and guardian group. We actually have an advisory group on the board that is called the Parent Guardian Advisory Committee. So mm -hmm. they are always, you know, making us aware of, of things that we may not know, kind of separating the, the truth from perception and um, and it's also a place for parents and guardians to, to get together and, and talk to each other you know support things it's kind of a support group yeah. Yeah, it's, it didn't start out that way but it really is turned that way we have great neighborhood support the nice. neighborhood committee could they have their neighborhood meetings here they couldn't be happier that we're part of the community yeah. um, this was a former school mm -hmm. Reedswood school I went to kindergarten right down the hall only for three years, so it wasn't. Okay. No, I'm just so I finally got out. But um, the neighborhood is a great supporter. They have their meetings here. They work with us. They they are interested in in becoming more involved and helping in uh, events that we have, mm -hmm. whether it's golf outings or you know breakfast with Santa or mm -hmm. field trips. They we are. I believe our development director Gina and I are going to be meeting with them, and I think uh, beginning of August, mm -hmm. and how they can be more involved. So they're really excited. We have one of the best fundraisers in, uh, in the area, um, which grows in attendance each year. It's the Chef's Tasting. Um, it's really neat. We have 10, 12, 15, however many restaurants we get, wow. and they all cook something different. So you, instead of sitting at a boring round table fundraiser, you get to get up. And you know, if you like 
what that guy's serving. That's you get awesome. the and then you vote. Oh, so, awesome. and we raise a lot of money through that. So we get we we do have some really good community support. We have another event um, that one of our uh, former board members and one of our former parents, um, the Keck family, uh, Jim and Debbie. Hi, Jim. Hi, Debbie. Uh, they host a fundraiser at the Autobahn. Oh, wow. So that the you know racetrack. I don't know if you guys have been out there. So you get a chance to drive around your track, your yeah. own car, and then we have kind of a, a dinner and a reception and a band and, and all this. So um, so um, there's the number if you want to call. <laughs> we'll call put it on, on the that. screen for you. We'll all. put it on the screen, and, and, and Gina Wysocki will be glad. To uh, fill you in, we have a golf outing. Uh, we have support from um, businesses, the Colzel brothers, phenomenal support. Not only do they do, they're, they're a distribution company for um, beverages. Mm -hmm. So not only do they do a great job of keeping the community hydrated, they do a great job of supporting the community. They do a golf outing um, that most of the proceeds go right here to the center. They host it, they do it, they get the course. We just compete and help where we can so we have a lot of a lot of support i mean we can always use support but we you know there, anybody who is serving people any agency that's that's lucky enough to serve people with disabilities cannot survive without the support right. of the community and um and development dollars just just couldn't do it it's just it's it, the cost just grows too much and it's tough so now, that, all of these events to raise money and awareness mm -hmm. for the center are those listed on your website they are awesome they are well, thank you for sharing that's great information and hopefully this will draw some yes. attention to the center as the website that we'll list um, to learn more about what you guys do and how we can be more of a help so i appreciate you taking I appreciate up the time everybody and for taking our time and, and look forward to uh hearing what the my comrades have to say <laughs> as oh, you bring them in we are with one of the caseworkers here mm -hmm. at the Center for Disabilities, Ms. Terry Porter. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. taking time. I know I had to a little push arm just a little bit, <laughs> right. so I just appreciate bit. it. Uh -huh. Tell me, what do you do here? I am a caseworker, which is a QIDP. I am a caseworker, so I am a advocate for the clients here. I make sure they have equipment, anything that they possibly need, anything that I can do for them to help them better themselves um, and make them independent versus us always doing for them. So that's my basically my goal. That's basically, that's that's a big goal. <laughs> and, it, and it's different for each individual. I yes, um, it depends on the individual's levels, but we can go from a small level to a high level of individuals. So it just, it, it depends. It depends on the actual client. Mm -hmm. So what kind of support other than funding, because we know mm -hmm. money is mm -hmm. huge, mm -hmm. do you need in your role to, to do your job better? I would say equipment for our clients is needed. Mm -hmm. Some of the parents' challenges is a little challenging because they don't understand right. Right. the ways and why it happened to them. Mm -hmm. So um, going into that, I think we need more activities, more places and vineyards, things that go for the handicap, for the disabled. We have people with wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. We need that accessibility yes. to get into those places yeah. and do different things for them and not frowned upon us right. because we're coming or because they have the behaviors and they may be in a public and in the community and people frowning and looking yeah. at them differently. We're not different. It's just they disabled. Right. We're still human. They we're need the same human. respect as anybody else gets. Right. So. And someone brought up a, um, a good point to me um, before that Anyone can become disabled oh, at yes. any time. Mm -hmm. So you want to treat people mm -hmm. the way that you would want to be yes. treated, no matter yes. what your disability is. Mm -hmm. So it's a blessing that we wake up mm -hmm. and we're not disabled. Mm -hmm. So to to have that compassion mm -hmm. for people who are different. Yes. And that's the reason for the show, mm -hmm. really, just to have that exposure mm -hmm. for people to see okay. different forms and di the the cross section mm -hmm. right. is endless. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I am so in awe yeah. of people like you who yeah. work in the field, yeah. boots on the ground. Right. Right. <laughs> and it, right. And it's also hard because people don't understand right. the, you know, how we, well, one person may go into a to, to the store. So say for instance, we're taking them into Walmart mm -hmm. and they have an outburst. You get that frown upon. Yeah. They're yeah. looking at you like, "What's the problem?" You yeah. know, that's not that's not fair. Right. Because there's a lot of people was just like us. 
at one time. Yeah. They had an accident. Mm -hmm. Things happened. They you became that way. Right. So some are not born that way. Right. So we have to be understanding that could happen to us. I could be sitting here today and something could happen to me. And I could be the same way. Exactly. How would I want somebody to treat me? And I think that's what people need to yes. keep in yes. their heads yeah. when trying to just, even if you don't understand mm -hmm. it, but if you volunteer, right. yeah. <laughs> you'll have exposure yes. to different types of <laughs> yes. people and understanding yes. the yes. different challenges mm -hmm. that go on. Mm -hmm. And it's not for everybody. I can right. say that. The field is not for everybody. Social service is not for everybody. Why I'm here, yeah. um, I had a kid, I had a son years ago who would have been a disabled child. Mm -hmm. um, I had carried the whole nine months. Okay. He died in my arms mm -hmm. and he would have been a disabled. I started out volunteering in the field. So here, what, 24 years later, wow. I'm here doing what I like, yeah. doing what I want to do. I understand the parents right. That's what I was because to say. I always in my mind think, what would I do? Mm -hmm. What would I be doing differently for my kids? So that's awesome. Because yeah. I mean, you go to you go to you think you're gonna have a baby, and mm -hmm. you know I gotta raise the baby right. up mm -hmm. in the way it should go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And then you find out there's some or there's a curveball that was thrown your way. Right. So that's emotionally, it's hard to yeah. accept as a yeah. parent. Yeah, and very emotional because I had two girls already. Mm -hmm. So coming home knowing I had a kid already and I know the, the procedure of the hospital yeah. and couldn't push the baby out in the wheelchair I left out by myself yeah. and where's my brother when I got home so it was been challenging mm -hmm. but it's been rewarding for me to work in this field when to you're know talking with parents do you share that like I know where you're coming from yeah it, depending yeah. on the case depending of course. on the case mm -hmm. you know they have so um some that's confused or yeah. don't understand. I kind of throw my little story out yeah, there a little why bit. Me? Why me? Yeah, why right. me? You know, who knows? Yeah. You know, but I think some things happen for a reason always. Right. Um, but it has helped me. I love helping my clients. I leave knowing fulfilled right. that I've done just a little thing, even if they brush their teeth. Yeah, that's huge. It's just, you know, yeah. so for parents it's huge. The things that we take for granted, right? You know, we're exactly. gonna wake up, we're gonna have to take mm -hmm. a shower, brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have that ability, and some mm -hmm. people can be taught, which right. is huge. Mm -hmm. right. And having two special needs, because yes. myself, like whatever oh, you yeah. can give me, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I <laughs> can get sure. a smile. Right. I mean, whatever. Right. It, right. You know, so and that it, smile is goals along the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It you is. Do the goals. You take them one step at a time, yeah. and they'll be fine. Thank oh, you so much yeah, for taking so thank time. So much. <laughs> this is harmless, right? Know, right? <laughs> thank you for spending no time. Problem, huh? And we'll be back to learn more about the Center for Disability. This book is the story of Jameson Harold Donovan, who lives in the city of Sussex Falls. Feeling trapped in his dysfunctional marriage to his wife and a stranger to his own children, thoughts of suicide dominate his waking hours. Jameson discovers he was selected before birth by the Almighty to receive quasi-angelic abilities. Between the ticks of the clock. So listen, Dr. Felicity Joy. Don't you just like seeing that? I love saying Dr. that. Dr. Felicity I Joy. I like hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> you should. So listen, what I want to hear about is we know that you're brilliant and that you teach internationally. We know that. Yeah, there's always. Tell us your story about your journey from being a teacher to becoming a talk show host. But for this particular venture I actually received a phone call from the producers and the producer that called me said listen we we're not going to be able to cast you for this because you just frankly look too young but they said we actually wanted to call you all of us decided we were going to call you producers that saw your audition we just really think one day you ought to have a talk show but um yeah so you know, I didn't know that this journey would kind of become my message, mm -hmm. but now the Felicity Joy Show is about helping people to make their dreams come true. JW Fusion. 
Like you, my family is always looking for great movies and TV shows to enjoy together. So you can only imagine how excited I was when we decided to create our very own media ministry, Road to Eternity. We believe in creating entertainment that edifies the soul by developing stories that incorporate faith and hope in people's lives. So whether you're watching a movie or even a television show, we desire to bring you closer to Jesus Christ by releasing entertainment that your family and friends can enjoy. From our family to yours, we thank you for joining us as we take you on this new and exciting journey. another phenomenal member of this community at the Center for Disabilities. And I have Susan Naprick with me. She's the principal. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking Please the time out your here. schedule. So tell me about your role here. Well, I am the principal of the school, basically the director of the programming, and I'm responsible for recruiting and enrolling students to the program. I work with all local district areas, about 27 different school districts, um, as their needs arise for students who are ages 3 to 21. So we have a very big program, um, early childhood all the way to transition programming. So I'm responsible for curriculum, day-to-day -day work here, state reporting, just about everything that a superintendent of a school district would do is my responsibility here. Wow. Now, being a the, the principal here, What? how do you compare with the principal as just a regular school? Yeah. What are some of the differences? Well, a lot of the main differences is every student who attends here is a special education student. Mm -hmm. So their diverse needs are huge. Um, we have a lot of autistic students, so behavioral concerns are a big issue. So training of the staff is huge in how to care for these students because each one is very unique. We have students who have medical issues also, mm -hmm. so not necessarily behavioral, um, that we're working with there, but more medical issues. So our day-to-day -day programming is really based on how the students come in. If they're having a great day, we have a great day. Mm -hmm. If they're having a bad day, we have to intervene more often. And it changes. It changes right. every day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so now at a regular school, you know, there are protocols that are probably, probably pretty consistent about how to handle behavioral problems. How do you guys handle it? Because they're all, every student's different. Our staff are trained individually on each student's behavior. Oh. So we have to do behavioral plans for any of those children who need it. And we're also working with a behavior specialist that we do have currently. Um, we started this program up last year. And so they're writing plans, we're intervening. I do a lot of the intervention coming from a regular school program, mm -hmm. knowing how to deal with behaviors. So I do a little more hands-on with that than some of the staff until they they're appropriately trained. Okay, that's awesome. Now, how long have you been doing this type of work? I am actually going on my 15th year here at Center for Disability Services, but prior to that, I have basically did 15 years and other programs throughout the area in the public school system. So I've had a little bit of both, public and private. Wow, that's awesome. What can we do as a community to help support your role here? I think a lot of it is just awareness. We want to get our students out into the community mm -hmm. and have the community respect the students who have special needs So and get them integrated to the best of their ability mm -hmm. in there. So we're within our transition program, we're looking at a few students who we'd like to do a little bit of job shadowing mm -hmm. with. So oh, nice. there are some of those opportunities and just partnering with different individuals throughout the community in order to allow us to get out there. Um, we currently, today, we're, we're at the movies today. So um, things like that. We go to Sam's Club and different different activities just to get our students out and about. Yeah, I mean, whatever we can give them, that if they can be self-sufficient in any kind of way, is help. 
Absolutely. And that's our biggest thing is right now we have a community garden that we're working with oh, um, nice. here on site too. We have a life skills program. So we're teaching the individuals to be as independent and functional as they can possibly be. Um, we have this fabulous kitchen here um, that all the students are learning cooking skills and canning mm -hmm. skills. So just even as a community, having people come in and want to volunteer some time in order to do those different things would be fabulous. And as they come in, you find out what their strengths are and you know where to place them. Just, well, whoever wants to help, you can find something for them to, to help oh, with. Oh, absolutely. We're always nice. looking for volunteers. Nice. Always. We need volunteers. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now, as far as the businesses in the community, like the movies, and how do you talk to, to the people? in the community who can hire and who can provide services for them to get them to be on board with special needs people. And that is a big part is building up that program. Um, I know the regular schools have some of those partnerships, so we're starting to explore them and really looking at s some of our individuals, what are their specific skills, mm -hmm. and just going out there to say, okay, we have somebody who wants to do some janitorial work, so where can we go to do this? Or um, right now, Goodwill is trying to help out placing some of the individuals with special needs into um, different programs and see if they're capable of working at Amazon or something like mm -hmm. that. So, and again, because our students are so unique, I mean, we have the lowest of abilities to some pretty higher functioning ability levels. Mm -hmm. um, we're totally across the board. So we have to be very specific when we're looking for those things and really know what the individual's goals are and mm -hmm. what they're really capable of doing. And I'm sure you include the families in on what the goals are to help them be comfortable with letting, especially when they're transitioning, oh, you know, absolutely. letting them get out there and kind of fly as much <laughs> as they can, right? <laughs> actually, it's at age 15, we start the transition goals. Okay. So at 15, we start those individual meetings with families in the school districts, um, hook them up with service and corporation, making sure that they have everything that they need when the child does eventually age out of the program mm -hmm. the day before their 22nd birthday. Wow. So we have several years of working with families in order to put everything into place. And every year we ask them the same questions. Where do you see your son or daughter living? Where do you see them working if they're going to be working? Um, what is it that you want for them mm -hmm. once they graduate the school program? And then our entire age 15 to 22 basically is working on those individual skills to get them there. My youngest is 14, so now I just got nervous. I'm like, yes. oh, I got to start this process that soon. Absolutely. I'll that be is, calling you for is. help. <laughs> and you mentioned going to the movies. Now, what, what, what type of amenities do you need at a movie theater for a special needs group as opposed to just people going to the movies? And what should people who are going to the movies understand about that? Well, what it is is um, definitely sensory issues. So we're always looking at what is the lighting out there? What is the commotion going on? So we kind of try to sneak in after the movies are, mm -hmm. or after the pre-show is mm -hmm. done and get them all set up into a nice quiet area. Um, some of ours are walkers so they can sit in seats, but then we also have a lot of wheelchairs mm -hmm. too. So making sure that there's that area available to them. And just for the community to understand that when we take a group of students out to the movies, there are going to be some behaviors and not to overreact right. if a student is acting up that the staff will will be able to monitor that. They'll either take them out. That's why we take a lot of staff members mm -hmm. when we go out is if somebody's having an issue that will take care of it, we'll remove them for a little while, calm them down, take fidgets so that they can fidget in their own seat, weighted vests, things like oh, wow. that, that will help them to maintain throughout the entire time. Oh, that's awesome. That's so good to hear because I'm taking my little one who's in a wheelchair and who can be very loud, can get interesting going to the movies. So just people coming to volunteer more with children and adults who have special needs, you get to learn a lot more about them. And you're great. I'm sure you and your staff are great at teaching people how to function and be around special needs kids and adults. I keep saying kids because mine is still. <laughs> it's but I appreciate that. that was some great information just to 
get the community to understand that volunteering is necessary at the state level funding, of course. Absolutely. You can never have too much money in this, in this industry. But I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you said summer was kind of a better time, but it's still busy. And just from a special needs parent, I appreciate everything that you do with the special needs kids and adults. Well, thank you, Wendy. It was a pleasure to be here today and to get the word out about our agency and let people know, you know, all of our students want to be treated just like every other yeah. child out there. Exactly. So just just remember that. And just because they're in a wheelchair or they may not communicate, treat them at their age level. Right. Now, for someone who wants to volunteer, who would they call here? Who would they ask for? Um, Gina Wysocki would be our contact for volunteers at this okay. time. Gina, get ready. They're going to be calling. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. We'll be in touch with Ms. Gina. I would love to volunteer. That's, that would be exciting for that me to do. That would be fabulous. We have Brittany Jones, and she is the Director of Support Services here at the Center for um, Disabilities in Joliet. Welcome. Hello. How are you? I, I'm great. I just heard you came in just for us because she's yes, very, 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 very pregnant. <laughs> but thank you so much um, for coming in. You're Tell welcome. me about what you do. So here I am. Actually, I've been here one year to eight months to the date. Um, so I am the director of our community support programs where I help individuals with special needs and with mental disabilities and intellectual disabilities. Um, so that's primarily within we have over 10 counties that we serve, but primarily within Joliet. Wow, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a <laughs> lot of people. Lot How'd of you people. get into this profession? Um, so actually, I started probably, it's been probably about 10 years now that I've been working with individuals with disabilities, started within my schooling. So it's always mm -hmm. been a... Um, I would say a passion. I, I don't even want to, if there was a bigger word for passion, wow. then I would encompass it that way. But um, within my education career, I've um, started at Northern, and then I actually, I'm from um, Palm, let me back up, actually, let's go back to the beginning. So um, I have Southern roots. So in, in the South, we all, we help each other, we help yeah. people. So that yeah. I can really say that's where it started. Okay. Um, and for my grandfather, he's the one who gave me the, um, the knowledge and the virtues, the values to say, when you see somebody down, you pick them up and you help them. Yes. So I would say it started there and then it transformed into how can I make this a career choice? So mm -hmm. it went into my schooling. And somehow um, from Arkansas, I ended here in Illinois. Wow, <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for grandpa. Because I mean, we, we should all have that mindset. Right. You see someone who needs help and help them. Yep. So it's awesome that he, he instilled those values yes. into you. So tell me about some of the joys that you've experienced in your industry. Um, one of the joys, um, this is actually my first, my second. It's my, my little boy, but I have a little girl. Oh. Um, and I talked to her about this last week. And she said, Mom, I love the way you do your job because you help people smile again. And when she said that to me, it hit me. And I'm like, is that really what she thinks? Um, and it's not something that I think of, right. but it's something that someone um, who did smile, they probably thought of. Um, so I actually, I just put on a, a presentation here on Tuesday, this past Tuesday. Okay. I wish you guys visited then. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but I had um, an animal show. I had cold-blooded mm. creatures come here. Um, shout out to Jim. So if he's listening to, um, they came here and did a performance. Um, they uh -huh. bought in like two snakes. They oh, bought in a whole alligator. Animals. Yeah. Okay. But it was something that a lot of our clients, they've never they even seen yeah. close up before. Wow. They've never even touched a texture. Wow. They never even felt an animal before. So that's what I mean by having um, our local supporters mm -hmm. and people who have family, or even if you don't, do things like that to give people the same opportunities that we have every day and that we kind of take for um we take for for granted we do yeah we definitely do yeah. we talked about that uh, <laughs> earlier we we just get up and just figure yeah. we have our day plan and we right. go and a lot right. of people there's a lot of work and planning that goes into right. getting through one day right but the smile is huge yeah number one it's your daughter notices yeah. that is yeah and she's nine she's nine i was about to say old. how old is she <laughs> yeah that, that, that touches her so you're yeah. probably doing what your grandfather did you're, inst you're yeah. instilling in her yeah. some things about helping people right. but the smile is so small but is yet so big. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Yeah. I'd like to thank Brittany and the other staff members who spent some time with us today teaching us more about what they do here at the Center for uh, Disability Services. 
continue to look up and see how you can reach out and help someone. Check out their website and see how you can come and help. They need lots of volunteers. There's some phenomenal people here. We'd love to have you come. Thank you for watching.